What's going on? My name is Mike and this is all about pressure washing. Today we're going to talk about what chemicals the pros use when they're pressure washing. It's an ugly day out. I'm recovering from a surgery. I had something called a cardiac ablation done, which basically fixes an irregular heart rate. So I'm moving a little slower than usual today, but I'm feeling much better. And let me also preface this video by saying at some point during this video, I'm going to try to sell you one of the training courses that we have. It's called How to Wash. And if you're watching this video, it's because you're trying to learn what chemicals professional pressure washing companies use. So this might be something that you're interested in. Anyway, the main chemical that we use when pressure washing is called sodium hypochlorite. And I know that there are a lot of internet trolls that go nuts when I say sodium hypochlorite. They say, you're just spraying water, man. It's not rocket science. It's just bleach. And yeah, it's essentially just bleach. But the reason that I say sodium hypochlorite or SH is because it's substantially stronger than what you typically get in a household bleach. The SH that we buy, it's not available to the general public or at least not in stores readily available, right? It's not on the shelf. We buy this stuff in bulk from chemical supply or pressure washing supply houses. It's like the difference between a Ferrari and a Honda. Both are cars, but they perform differently. SH does a phenomenal job in disinfecting, removing stains, as well as killing any organic material like mold and mildew and other things that might be growing on the house. And with that being said, it's very important that you understand the proper methods of application, the specific ratios needed for different surfaces, as well as what you need to do to protect your customer's property from damage. Of course, we're not going to use a full strength 10 or 12% SH when we're cleaning. We dilute this in a number of different ways, either batch mixing, downstreaming, or using a metering system to achieve our target mix. Now, lots of folks also use surfactants known as soaps uh, mixed in with their SH and there's a lot of people that will tell you that it's okay to use a store-bought soap and while it's true it's important to understand that you should never use a dish detergent like Dawn if you're going to use store-bought soap use a laundry detergent because it's been specifically formulated to work with bleach that is not the case with a dish detergent and there are lots of options out there as far as professional surfactants we use Southeast soft washes southern drawl and the purpose of the surfactant is to allow the chemical to stay on the wall longer uh, uh, and it just makes your cleaning process a lot easier. It provides the time for the detergents to do their work. It also helps trap dirt and other pollutants in the water, which aids in the cleaning of the surface when you're rinsing. We typically don't use a surfactant when we're doing a house wash, but we always do when we're doing a roof cleaning. That is just a personal choice on our end, and I know a lot of people swear by it and use it on every surface every single day. And again, it's just a personal choice. Now, another chemical that professional pressure washers use on a regular basis is an industrial strength degreaser. We get ours from l &H here in Savannah. It's called Big Dog, and we also get Dynamite Degreaser from Southeast. Having a good degreaser is essential because they attack oil stains, grease stains, and other nastiness through an aggressive chemical reaction. There are a number of different degreasers available, and while they do a phenomenal job cleaning, they can also damage the surface that you're cleaning, so you have to be very careful of the surface and yourself. Another product that is commonly used in the pressure washing process is oxalic acid. Now, there are several name brands of products that use oxalic acid in them, and basically it's just a rust remover. Now, you see rust on concrete and it's caused by a number of things. It could be fertilizer. It could be iron leaching from the ground. Customers that have well water that isn't filtered can also have rust issues because of higher concentrations of minerals in the water. The problem can be even bigger if their irrigation system is on that same well water and it sprays all over the concrete and all over the house. But a good rust remover will do a great job treating these type of problems. Something that is also very beneficial, especially if you're doing a lot of roof cleaning, is having a bleach neutralizer on hand. Obviously, Obviously, when you're cleaning roofs, you have to be very cognizant of overspray, runoff onto the plants and other vegetation. A bleach neutralizer does not negate the need for watering thoroughly before, during, and after the cleaning process. It's just an added insurance policy that we use in order to prevent possible damage from happening to our customer's stuff. We do everything we can before this step, but again, this is just added protection for our customer's property. And if you're running a pressure washing business, you know this is a corrosive environment that we work in. Water and chemicals wreak havoc on our equipment. Our trailers, the trucks, everything that we use, right? So spraying down your equipment on a regular basis with a bleach neutralizer can definitely help prolong the life of your gear. So the last one we're going to talk about is a great add-on service. So you've washed the house, it's looking great, but there are still those little ugly black stripes all over the gutters. Now this isn't going to come out with a standard house wash. Those ugly little stains are a direct result of a chemical reaction between the asphalt and the roof shingles and the anodized aluminum in the gutters. These are not just stains. They're in there good and they're going to stay in there and a typical house wash isn't going to do anything to help. Maybe lighten them up a bit, but they're still going to be there after you're done washing. So you have to use a specifically formulated product designed to break down the bond and remove the stripes. There's a bunch of different options out there. Every stain is different, so the application, the dilution, and the method of cleaning are, are going to vary, right? Sometimes you can just spray it and rinse it. Other times you may require a little agitation with a brush or a little more pressure. Gutter Guard is our go-to on this one. 
obviously there are a ton of different chemicals that you can use when you're out there pressure washing. These are just a few that I wanted to highlight for you. If you're interested in learning more, check out our resource page. It's full of great training for the pressure washing industry. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you learned something and I hope you have a great day.